Hello YouTube, my name is Paul. Thank you for watching my Amiga Power Top 100 videos over the last two months. Um, been very enjoyable doing them actually. There's so many games on that list I've never played before. In fact, I've only ever played about a third of them. And I only played those one third probably on the Atari ST before owning an Amiga sort of in 1992 onwards. Um, so yeah, the top 10 I've picked out then are games which are dear to me. Um, Maybe some surprises in there. There may not be some surprises in there. Um, some games I haven't had the time to play, such as Dungeon Master, which haven't made the list because it just takes so long to play them to appreciate how good they really are, and I've never done that. So there are some notable uh, absences, but I never played them back in the day, so therefore they will not be in my list. So my top 10 will be as follows. Okay then, so first up, number one, no, or number ten, or whichever way you want to put it. I haven't decided where I want to put it yet. It's Lemmings. So Lemmings is a game I played originally when I got my Amiga 600 in 1992. So probably about a year, 18 months after it came out. Um, it's the only game I had, so I had no choice but to persevere with it. Um, which is not a bad thing, because it turns out it was an absolute stonking game. Um, unique to me, I never played a game like it before. Uh, graphically it was very functional, uh, great fun, very challenging at times because it gets your brain going. Uh, it's a game I still play today. I certainly would recommend it. There's an add-on pack for it as well and there's some sequels, like millions of them. So yeah, that's my first or tenth game out of the way. Next up then is Speeble 2. So a game released in early 1991. Uh, developed by the Bitmap Brothers. It is a sequel to 1988 classic Speedball. Uh, beefed up graphics, beefed up sound, beefed up everything. Absolutely fantastic game. Not only is it one of the best sports games on the Amiga, it's also one of the best Amiga games, period. Um, you guide your team through two leagues. Uh, you start off at the bottom with literally like very limited stats. You train your players, you buy extra players in, and you just do some brutal shit on the pitch. And I'll tell you something, it is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It is brilliant. Um, a game I've played many times. I've never actually beat it. Got to the got to the second place in the league table. Second place, simply and good enough. Um, highly addictive. But yeah, brilliant game. I would highly, highly recommend it. Okay, then number three on my list is Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge. It's a game OutRun is very jealous of. Absolutely fantastic, very fast game. They stripped away a lot of the graphics and kept it kind of minimalistic, um, but the speed was incredible. It had not been seen before in the Amiga, not a driving game like that anyway. Uh, split, split screen aspect added a bit of fun to it, but I was just blown away by the speed. Cracking game, actually. Um, yeah, what else can you say? It was the best driving game at that point on the Atari ST or the Amiga. So, there you go. So, next up, Rainbow Islands. A game released early 1990. Um, a game I never intended to buy. Uh, I had some money, so I thought I'd go and buy a game, and that was the one I bought. I bought it home, and I was not disappointed. A highly addictive platformer. The first game I ever played where you crap rainbows out your ass. I'll tell you something, it was worth it. Um, just progress through the levels as per usual, as a normal platformer does. But absolutely fantastic. Graphically fantastic and very, very close to the arcade. Next, Populous. Now, Populous was the first game I ever played for more than 12 hours. I'll tell you something, that game eats into your life like no one's business. It's also the first God's game I ever played absolutely blinding game again one of those games you need to persevere with to get the full enjoyment out of it uh, if you don't then it's bloody tedious but absolutely brilliant um, completely different to anything I've ever seen before in fact I think it is the first god game ever made but yeah brilliant now this is a beauty kickoff 2 so I bought this in 1990 I think it coincided with the World Cup um, Italy 1990 for those of my age, sort of my age uh, probably one of the more famous World Cups that you'll remember um, Gaza crying and Baggio and all the rest of it but yeah kickoff 2 I spent hours playing on with a friend absolute hours it's one of those games that if you play it and don't play it enough um, 
it's frigging frustrating. You persevere with it, I tell you what, you'll be rewarded. The game is absolutely fantastic. You know what I mean? Curling those balls in, into the box, volley straight in the net. Couldn't do it now. My God, I put the game on now, it's flipping hard. But yeah, you master that game, it's pure satisfaction. Next up, F29 Retaliator. So, I played Falcon as well. But I found F29 Retaliator um, was a lot easier to get into. It had a more of an arcade feel to it as opposed to Falcon. Um, which made it really enjoyable. It's very fast, graphically very, very, very good for its time. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed those missions. Yeah, those dogfights. And they weren't... They, with Falcon, it really slowed down, but with F29, it didn't. And I think for me, for a flight sim, it was actually really good fun. Right, next up is a game I couldn't pronounce for many years. Damocles. I hope it's called Damocles, because that's what it's now bloody called. Damocles was a large open world game. Uh, it was vast. In fact, it was so vast, me and my best mate used to draw... Uh, maps and grids of where a thing used to be because we couldn't, couldn't find it again a bit like Fallout 4, you play the core mission it's quite small, but you branch out and do sort of side quests and that is, is really more interesting um, yeah, you so stand on the planets and watch the sort of moon and the, and, the, and the planets go around the sun and all the rest of it, it looked really really good um, again, a large game persevere with it it's certainly worth playing next up Carrier Command. So Carrier Command, again I first played on the Atari ST. Uh, I think it was a game which came with the Atari ST pack I got, or my friend got. Again, one of those games you need to persevere with, because uh, it's quite large. Um, the fact you control a carrier, on the carrier you have amphibious ships, uh, you have planes. Uh, you have to capture each island, if I remember rightly, um, with an opposing carrier doing exactly the same thing somewhere else on the map. So until you meet, you capture as many islands as you can. And when you do meet, it all hell breaks loose. But actually, it's a very good game graphically. Um, again, quite unique. A lot of these games here are a bit different. And probably games I've never really played before. Um, or genres I've never really played before. And finally, no... Um, hmm, IK Plus. So IK Plus... As you may notice, is the Atari ST version, but that's the version I had it on. But it's identical to the Amiga version. IK Plus, again, quirky, fun. It's just great. Really good, fun game to play. Uh, even with two players, it's brilliant. Never got past the purple belt. Um, never quite quick enough for the combinations. But when you do pull off a decent combinations, it's brilliant. Sort of that sort of roundhouse kick or whatever it's, flipping out it's called. Um, Nutting people, nutting people. I don't think I played a game before where you nut someone in the head and get so much satisfaction out of it. What a game! So that's my 10, my top 10. Um, like I said, many games I haven't played enough of to persevere. Some of those um, top 100 games were part of shit, to be honest with you. I mean, there are some games that I'm missing. Please write them below in the description box because I've got no idea on most of them, but I know our type's not in it. And the Amiga conversion of our type is absolutely amazing. I'm pretty sure it came out before 1991. Um, that's one notable missing game, but I'm sure there's many others. But there are some, yeah, some bad ones in there. In there. Well, thank you for watching this. Uh, if you want to leave your own top 10 below, brilliant. Or if you want to do a video response of your top 10 Amiga games, even better. Um, until next time, I'll see you later. I almost forgot, what is my favourite of those 10 games? Crap, I don't know. Um, no, I don't. I really don't know. It's not that easy. I mean, they're all different bloody games. That's the thing. Um, hmm. Let me just think about it for a second, because I really don't know.